the first type of bolt preload you can have uh, in your FEA package. It's the simplest one, that would be the board preload uh, applied to a beam. Uh, you can see that I already have my rectangular hollow section modeled. It's supported in pinned boundary conditions at the edges. That's not very uh, uh, important here. I will switch the supports off. There are no loads, but I will switch them anyway because I don't like how they look. You can see that here inside in red, I have one beam element that is my bolt. And then there is a rigid element here in blue connecting the bolt in the middle of the opening to all the elements and all the nodes. Uh, on the circumference of the opening I've made here. So the opening is, of course, uh, with diameter of the bolt. Uh, and then to apply this, I will make a view a bit cleaner. This way it's easier to see what's going on. Okay. Uh, and it's rather simple. I just go to loads. I need a new set of loads. Let's call it load. And then here, one of those is bolt preload. Note that there is no regions defined as of now, but when I do bolt preload, I need to title it somehow. And then I need to say how big the preload is. It's a relatively thin plated uh, hollow section, so I will just make 10 kilonewtons. Uh, I'm using SE unit system, so this is in newtons, this is why it's 10,000. And when I press OK, uh, it asks me where it should be applied, so I need to select the bolt. And say, yep, you can see now that there is a ni nice small bolt symbol here, which represents that I have a bolt preload, and also there is a region called bolt preload. This is mostly because uh, FEMAP organizes the preloading of bolts on regions, so it automatically created the the region for me. And since I already have constraints and I have the, the load, uh, I can actually run uh, an analysis. I have several already defined here, but we can do a new one just so you can see how it works. So let's make a new one. It will be static, which basically means that it's a linear analysis. So linear analysis bold preload tutorial. Okay. Nothing fancy here, uh, to be honest. I could set number of processors in RAM, but this is such a small task that it's it's really irrelevant. And uh, to be fair, you don't have to click a lot. All you need to say is that loads come from loads, and you can see here that bolt preload comes from, from load as well. This is where we defined it. And we, of course, want some sort of outcomes to get, and, and we're done. I can analyze the problem. It won't take a while. It's, it's a very small model. Uh, so normally when I do training, I would have to know some, a few funny stories to, to tell when the model is computing, but this one will take like a second. Oh, it's actually already done. And when we uh, load the outcomes, we can show the formations. And you can see that preloading of the, of the bolt actually made the plate goes to the inside. Of course, we can display stresses and all that, but uh, the big... An important thing here is that it works and we got what we like. The only output vector I want to show you actually uh, is the normal force because this is the important one. So we need uh, normal actual force. Here it is. Okay. And you can see that the value is. Oh, maybe I will switch the... Re okay, now it's easy. You can see that the value is almost 10,000, so the amount we applied, which means that the preloading works. It, it did what it's supposed to do. There is a 10 kilonewtons of pre-tensioning pre in the bolt, and you can see it. And of course, this pre-tensioning caused deformations and stresses and everything else. So this is the simplest way in which you can apply bolt preload in FEMAP, and most likely in most FEA uh, systems. Uh, this is the second way we will define bolt preload in our example. Firstly, we model the bolt as a beam. Now it's a solid shape. You can see a lot of finite elements here. Each of them uh, are hex elements. And 
we want to preload a solid bolt. So the first thing I did before starting recording, uh, I've prepared the model a bit. And the most important part is that I actually define a contact between the rectangular hollow section wall and the bottom of the washer. Uh, otherwise, if the bolt would shrink, it will simply fly through the rectangular hollow section and that wouldn't be what I wanted to achieve. So obviously the contact between the washer and the rectangular hollow section on both sides, so on the top and on the bottom of the model, uh, is actually required. But this is not about the contact itself, I'm just pointing out that, uh, that you will need it. So the first thing I want to do, uh, this is how Fimap operates, is I want to define a bolt region. But to do this, I will use a custom tool called Snap to Orthogonal View. This will make it easier for selecting the nodes. I, I'm more or less scrolling to the middle of the bolt, but I'm not very concerned should this be this this layer or this layer. It's it's irrelevant to some degree. Uh, I will select bolt region. I need to claim that this will be a solid shape, so I will mark nodes. Uh, it asks me about bolt axis. You can see that it's vertical Y. Of course, if you have a bolt in a difficult direction, like not along any global axis. You can create your own coordinate system to move along. And I will call it bolt region one, and I want to add multiple nodes. And what I would try to do is to mark all the nodes in one layer of the bolt. And I can highlight to see if I managed to do that. It looks nice. So, okay, I have a bolt region. Now, I can go to loads and create a new load set. Preload, okay. And here you can see bolt preload. And I can select that I want to use bolt region. And as previously, I will use 10 kilonewtons. So 10 kilonewtons. bolt preload okay and it asks me to select the the bolt region so since there's only one it's a relatively simple task it's like okay this is it and it's done so now i can define new analysis it will be static so linear static linear analysis and just as before there isn't a lot to set here. I could play with some settings, but it's a small analysis, so I don't have to. And again, it bolt preload, I will select that I have bolt preload. Of course, if I would have quote unquote normal loads, th those would be here. But for me, I'm just using the, uh, the preload and nothing else. I want to make sure that I actually request outputs. This is pretty irritating because if you make subcases uh, in FEMAP, not always uh, they are checked that you actually want to get output from them. So you can run the analysis just to realize that it ended and there is no output. So it's better to check that. And having this done, I can analyze the problem. This will take only a second. Okay, as you can see, the analysis is already done. It took slightly over one minute, so significantly more than in the previous case, but mostly because of the contact. And I can display outcomes. So again, uh, we can see that it actually did something. Uh, you can notice that it is deformed. Let's maybe make the move we made before to show, show it on the inside as well. And maybe I will increase the scale slightly. So yeah, it's clearly visible that the pretensioning did something. But in the previous part, we checked uh, how the, uh, the force in the bolt here will have to check stresses. So it can be fun misses stress, I guess. Oh, I need a solid one. Okay, we can zoom in and say, show us one value. You can see that the stress is 32 megapascals. And 
if you would calculate the 10 kilonewtons of pretensioning force divided by the area of the bolt, you would actually uh, get this value. So uh, I am happy that everything worked as intended. The load in the bolt was applied correctly, the model deformed, and this is how you can apply pretensioning to a solid bolt in FEMA. But there is also one thing I want to mention, and that is that um, if your system does not support bolt regions and applying preloads this way, uh, or you want to use uh, an advanced nonlinear solver in FEMA, which apparently does, doesn't support this as well, you can always do something like this. You can model your bolt as a solid body, then connect it via rigid element, like rigid body element type 2, or maybe a rigid surface, to one central node, the same done on the other side. Here you have one element that is a beam, and you can apply the same pretensioning force as we did previously. So sure, it's on a shorter length, but in the end, this will work precisely the same, and you will get the same outcome. So if for whatever reason your FEA solver uh, or preprocessor does not support preloading bolts on area, you can always do this trick and it, it really works nicely. So I figured I will mention it as well. And this is the end of the example. So to wrap it up, you've learned how to pretension a bolt that is a beam and how to pretension a bolt that is made with solid elements and how to connect those two uh, if your software does not support pretensioning uh, 3D meshed bolts. Of course, this is not all. If you are interested in learning more about Bolt Preload, definitely take a look at my blog post. You will find the link below. See you around and thanks for watching.